Hello, my name's Lily Pozzi, and this is my segment, Miked Up with Barnesville Field Hockey. Um, I chose to do this segment because I thought it would be fun, and my favorite part about this segment was the participants, so enjoy. I definitely shouldn't have worn these pants today. Oh, oh my gosh, sorry. I saw it in my face. <laughs> I farted in your face? No, your butt was in my face. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my god, I keep doing that. I, I think I had Miss Cass first. Love Miss Cass. Oh no, our table. It's broken. Oh no. Can you shut up? Yeah. Then I had, I think I had Mr. Shea after that. Happening. They were like, put this thing on, go out. It I'm so scared. I'm so scared. <laughs> And then I went out on the wrong side. Everyone wants to know, I'm wearing a child size sports bra right now. And then I apparently wasn't even out on the field at that point. And I'm gonna throw up any minute. Let's go Caroline! And then my coaches got mad at me for it, so I feel like they should formally apologize. Because formally apologize. Oh, I did a good one! I'm gonna puke up my Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Beat burrito after this. You know what sounds so good right now? Sweet waves. Hannah, you know, what are we doing? Just stop your crying. It's the sound. Go, Ella. I can't do this today. Sign of the time. Okay. She's coming down the field pretty fast. She got my bags. Oh no. Should I give up? Or should I just keep chasing Caitlin's? Oh! Good play by me. No, Ella, get away from me. Ella, I'm on Ella. This thing weighs a thousand pounds. This thing weighs a million pounds. Ow, Ella. Awkward. Ding, oh no. Ding. My name is Garrett Wiseman, and what you're about to see is the first installment of the RFID series. We chose this series to poke fun a little bit at the RFID system, and I think my favorite part of it was just writing the script. It was a lot of fun, so I hope you enjoy. Hey. Late again, I see. Excuse me? You heard me. Late again. And? It's like the fifth time this week, idiot. At this point, it seems like you don't even care. Like, do you even want to be here? It's almost ridiculous at this point how much time you spend in the hallways talking to all your friends. Is this not even new? Don't forget to scan in. I hate these things. Uh, I heard that. I heard that. Oh, so now you're gonna mock me. Shut up. Hey, wait a second. That's not your card. Stop, you're gonna get me in trouble. This guy's trying to score me. Sorry, my card seems to be acting up. I'm gonna take my hands off and we're gonna have a nice, calm conversation, alright? Listen, I don't know who you think you are, Buster, but I'm gonna get you in so much trouble. Come on, just turn out my friend so he doesn't get another Saturday school. Sounds like a YP to me. A YP? Your problem. Can't you let it slide this one time? My folks will kill me if I get in trouble again. Maybe you should have thought about that before you assaulted me, you sneaky snake. it has gotta be something I can do, please. Well, you can apologize for starters. For what? For saying you hated me. Sorry, I'm having a bad day. I shouldn't take it out on you. Thank you. And you know, this isn't a piece of cake for me either. Sitting in the same spot all the time, everybody mad at me, and you know, you're just trying to do your job. It gets pretty lonely. That's a bummer. Never thought of it like that. On top of that, I'm just a boring black box. Just like every other RFID reader in the school, I want to be me, you know what I mean? I think I do. I think I do. There we 
we go. What do you think about that? I love it. I really love it. Merry Christmas, RFID card reader. Merry Christmas, Garrett. This is the second installment of the RFID series and the most recent addition to the series. Uh, this one we chose because we already had the first one going and we thought it'd be fun to do it again. And just like the first one, the scripting was my absolute favorite on this. Hope you enjoy. Hey, Titus, got good news. Titus? Well, you didn't have a name. I thought it could be fun to try one out. Weird. Anyways, what's the news? Well, I got selected for the RFID group, so I'm scanning in again. Oh, good. More work. I thought you'd be excited. I mean... I'm excited to see you and scan you in, but some of these kids get on my nerves. Look what they did to me. I'm Arnold. I was wondering what was up with the whole costume change. They put it on me and said it was because I'll be back. Clever. Yeah, clever, but they didn't ask before they did it. Well, I'm sorry, but aren't you happy I'm scanning in again? I am happy. Sorry, just don't call me Titus and we'll be cool. Sounds good. Eddie? Nope. By the way, can you get me some smart water from the vending machine? Why do you want water? Electrolytes. Are you serious? No, I'm trying comedy. Is it not working? Oh, oh, okay, no, I get it. Do you want me to pick you up an apple down there too, or are you more of an android guy? I think you should probably sit down before you embarrass yourself more. Because the, like, the phone br okay, yeah. Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Estella. And we're introducing the PSA we did for phone usage. We created this project for the student ME submissions. And our favorite part about this project was filming it with our class. 95% of teens have access to their smartphone. On The story of mac and cheese is very complex, and I traveled to a school to see if anyone knew the truth. You teach in the uh, history department, correct? I do. Uh, do you know what the history of mac and cheese is? Ooh, I think actually it was an enslaved cook for Thomas Jefferson, maybe? Mac and cheese, I don't like mac and cheese. He sounds very stupid. All right, so Jada was making some pasta. Shelf fell. And Shell? then the cheese fell in. And he was like, let me just leave it in here, see what happens. <laughs> well, I know it was made in Italy in the 13th century. Those people were uneducated. Like most things, people think that macaroni comes from God, but it actually comes from Jobel. Jobel came from the earth, and the hill people didn't like that. So they beat him up until his noodles were all shriveled and small. And that's how macaroni was made. But you might be asking, that's not mac and cheese, that's just macaroni. And I'd say, shut up. Shut up! Like, actually shut up! But like, yeah, you'd be right. So like, here is the honored story. See, the stars shone in the west. There were big blooms and the, the sphinx rose from the ground and the, the statues were all around and, and the, the statues were all around. Real bumpy. Spaghetti was mashed and the pool of spaghetti was mashed and shut up. Right sea, King, shut up! Like, but actually, shut up! Down. And that's the story you never knew about mac and cheese. Bye, guys. See you next time. We got them, guys. We got them. See you next time. Bye, bye. Bye, guys. We got them. Average, we were spending seven hours a day on our phones. A recent report showed we'll spend nearly a decade of our lifetime staring at our screens. This is affecting us. The rise in phone usage and social media addiction correlates with the sharp rise in teen depression and suicide. We need to change. We need to spend less time on our screens and be more present in everyday life. Choose life, not likes. If you or someone you know is struggling with phone addiction, call the National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. Hi, my name is Callie Tedeco, and my project is Why I Run. I chose to do this project because I wanted to showcase what running means to me. I really liked how the slow motion came out in this project. 
I hope you enjoy. Why do I run? Simply put, it's part of who I am. Running is where I feel most alive, and I crave the endorphins it gives me. In my opinion, running is more mental than physical. The hardest part may always be getting started, but once I'm going, the flow sets in. I can admit, the rhythm comes naturally to me, but talent only gets you so far. The individuality of the sport allows for control. So you have the driver's seat of your own success. I like the competition with others, but I love the competition with myself. Yes, I like winning, and I may have a large appetite for victory, but more importantly, I find pleasure in the pursuit of my goals. The pain cave is where I thrive, but sometimes I feel overburdened by expectations. That's when running lends me a release. It gives me a moment to silence my brain, giving me some clarity, extinguishing my stress, and allowing me to just move forward, one step at a time. In a world where the unprecedented continues to occur, running is always there for me. I can always confide in doing a daily run. It keeps me sane. I love that it brings me outside of nature. Running by the water just never gets old. And I love being inside on the track, pushing harder each time I hear that last laugh bell. But no matter the route or workout, the feeling after a run remains the same. The feeling of accomplishment after just never subsists. And I am left a happier me, a better person. I cannot forget to mention the community. The sport is giving me more friendships than it has medals, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So if you've ever thought of going for a run, take it from me and just do it. And this is why I run. Hello, my name is Colby Murbeck, and I made blasters, blasters, blasters because I like Star Wars. My favorite part was making the costume. I did not enjoy burning myself. Enjoy. I'm looking for TK1724 and Daryl Bays. I need you in my office immediately. Okay, let's start with who you are and why you joined the Empire. Name's Daryl Bays. Uh, I'm a weaponsmith. I volunteered to join the Empire. I can't remember how long ago it was, but I was on Tatooine. He said I could earn some credits, but re really I just wanted to get off that Bantha pit. I'm TK1724. I mean, it wasn't really join the Empire. It was more of like captured and conquered my planet when I was five. So I didn't really have a choice, but uh, I guess I'm here now, so. I mean, I gotta tell you, working on these blasters all day is, is goddamn tedious. I could list every part to an E-11 probably easier than I could spell my own name. Being a stormtrooper isn't so bad. I mean, you get shot at, you shoot stuff, you go places. Just like a long vacation, except the threat of a rebel blaster bolt every once in a while going through my helmet. I mean, it's not awful. Have you experienced any problems over the last few days? I mean, you can check my logs, but Honestly, the only thing is my accelerated particle cutter blew a transformer, so I had to put it in a repair. Uh, other than that, it's just blasters, blasters, blasters. I mean, I was just on a volcano planet. Like, why would the rebels want a volcano planet? I lost both of my boots. 
to volcanic ash. What am I going to do now? Wear my Converse? So, what happened today in the weapon maintenance room? Don't even get me started with that bucket-headed bimbo. Comes running in there telling me I calibrated his blaster wrong. It's ridiculous. I could calibrate those blasters with my eyes closed. You know, there's a, there's a better chance of Lord Vader becoming a Jedi than me messing up one of these blasters. You won't believe it. This guy shot me. I just brought my gun in for a normal blaster checkup, and he shot me. I mean, I don't know where you guys are picking up these stormtroopers. That guy didn't even come close to hitting me. He couldn't even hit a, a Rancor if he was riding it. I mean, what do you expect out of a Tatooine ball? He probably works on scrap compared to our Imperial grade blasters. I mean, this guy's disgusting. He doesn't even clean his armor. The ash buildup on his blaster is ridiculous. I can't believe it even cycles. I mean, you, give me a Excuse break. Me? We've received some video surveillance from the altercation that occurred in the weapon maintenance room. See? Watch the video. Hey, Faze. Go away, I'm busy. Blaster's defective. What'd you do to him? The only thing that's defective in here is that trigger finger of yours. Oh, yeah? My name is Johnny Finch, and my project is the history of mac and cheese. I made this project to spread awareness, and my favorite part about it was just learning about uh, this food that I enjoy. The story of mac and cheese is very complex, and I traveled to a school to see if anyone knew the truth. You teach in the uh, history department, correct? I do. Uh, do you know what the history of mac and cheese is? Ooh, I think actually it was an enslaved cook for Thomas Jefferson, maybe? Mac and cheese, I don't like mac and cheese. He sounds very stupid. All right, so Jada was making some pasta. Shell fell and Shell? the cheese fell in. And he was like, let me just leave it in here, see what happens. <laughs> Well, I know it was made in Italy in the 13th century. Those people were uneducated. Like most things, people think that macaroni comes from God, but it actually comes from Jobel. Jobel came from the earth, and the hill people didn't like that. So they beat him up until his noodles were all shriveled and small, and that's how macaroni was made. But you might be asking, that's not mac and cheese, that's just macaroni. And I'd say, shut up. Shut up! Like, actually, shut up! But like, yeah, you'd be right. So like, here is the honored story. See, the stars shone in the west. There were big booms everywhere. And the, the sphinx rose from the ground, and the, the statues were all around, and, and the, the statues were all around. Real bumpy. Spaghetti was mashed and, and, and the spaghetti was real bumpy. And shut up! Red sea came shut up! Down. Like, the actually, came shut up! Down. And that's the story you never knew about mac and cheese. Bye guys, see you next time. We got him guys, we got him. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye guys, we got him. Hi, my name is Gabriel Diazavito, and this is my music video project, Meta Angel, by FKA Twigs. Um, my favorite part of this project was being able to branch out and try something that I hadn't done this year yet. Um, throughout the year, we worked on mostly news related things for BHN, and with this music video, I kind of went and tried something new. So I had fun doing it and I hope you enjoy watching it.
some kind of matter angel then they could whisper all the answers and maybe life would just slow down I don't think that I'll make it on my own Voices in my heart Hi, my name is Gabriel Diaz Avito, and this is the Ferris Bueller edition of Shot by Shot. For this project, we recreated the classroom scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I hope you enjoy. Adams. Here. Adam Lee. Here. Adamowski. Adamson. Here. Adler. Here. Anderson. Anderson. Here. Euler. Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Um, he's sick. My best friend's sister's boyfriend's brother's girlfriend heard from this guy who knows this kid who's going with this girl who saw Ferris pass out at 31 Flavors last night. Guess it's pretty serious. Thank you, Simone. No problem whatsoever. Fry. Hi, my name is Jessica Hernandez and I made the guide to pronouns. I learned that there is a lack of education about pronouns outside of the social norm, so I thought it would be best to do a video to teach people about it. Hope you enjoy. Did you know that 1.2 million Americans identify as non-binary? Someone who doesn't identify as male or female is non-binary. Gender identity is a completely different concept from sex and sexual orientation. There are a lot of terms you'll see thrown around when talking about gender. Sex refers to what someone was born with. You'll see certain terms like assigned female at birth, AFAB, and assigned male at birth, AMAB, but this doesn't identify who they are as a person. We're commonly led to believe that gender is a binary, male and female only. But not all cultures have a binary system. There are more than two genders in different cultures. A pronoun is a part of speech used to replace a noun in a sentence. Some people use pronouns to express their gender identity. Gender neutral pronouns have been used since the 13th century, originating with Shakespeare. Someone left their phone. I hope they find it. Oh, yeah, no, that's theirs. Gender identity is a very personal part of who we are. It's how people perceive and express themselves in the world. A dead name is a name that somebody was given at birth, which they no longer go by and does not confirm their identity at all. Sexual orientation has to do with who someone is attracted to both physically and romantically. Gender has to do with the social construct in society regarding women and men. This public service announcement was made possible by Barnstable Educational Television and the Gay Straight Alliance at Barnstable High School.